OK, so we're going to look at a nice way of solving cubic equations using a clever substitution method. We'll have a look at how and why this method works more generally, but first we'll go through this example in full. So the idea here is that we replace our variable x with z minus 2 over z, and then we'll solve the equation to find what z needs to be, and this will tell us what our solutions in x need to be. So we just replace all of our x's now by z minus 2 over z, substitute these in, then we'll need to expand the brackets, and tidy up and see if we can solve to find z. So expanding this first bracket, z cubed, we get minus 6, now just times z, then plus 12 over z, and finally minus 8 over z cubed, when we just expand all of this. Then we also get plus 6z and a minus 12 over z from here, finally with a minus 2, and then all of this is equal to 0. So you'll see here quite a few things are going to cancel. Our minus 6z cancels with our plus 6z, and our plus 12 over z cancels with our minus 12 over z. So this reflects the substitution choice we've made there. So now all we're left with is z cubed minus 8 over z cubed minus 2 is equal to 0. And what we can do here is we'll multiply by z cubed. So we get z to the 6, then I'll write it as minus 2z cubed from the minus 2 term, minus 8 is equal to 0. And it might not look like we've simplified things very much, but this is actually a quadratic in z cubed now. So we can write z to the 6 as z cubed squared minus 2 z cubed minus 8, and this is equal to 0. So this is now something that we can just factorise. We get z cubed minus 4 multiplied by z cubed plus 2 is equal to 0. So we see here that our solutions then are going to satisfy z cubed is equal to 4, and z cubed is equal to minus 2. And now we can find our solutions in z. So when z cubed is equal to 4, we can just take cube roots, and you see that one of our solutions is going to be z is the cube root of 4, or 4 to the power of 1 third. But this isn't the only possible solution if we allow complex solutions as well. So here, instead of just having 4 to the power of 1 third, we could also multiply by any cube root of 1, so a cube root of unity. So we get an extra solution, 4 to the third times e to the 2 pi i over 3, where if we were to cube all of this, you'd get that to 4 times 1. So this would indeed be a solution to z cubed equals 4. And similarly for our other cube root of unity, you get 4 to the third times e to the 4 pi i over 3 would also be a valid solution to z cubed equals 4. So now let's do the same thing when z cubed is equal to minus 2. Our real solution is just going to be z is the negative of, I'll put this in brackets, the cube root of 2. So this is our real solution, but we can do the same thing again where we multiply by cube roots of unity. So minus the cube root of 2 multiplied by e to the 2 pi i over 3. When we cube all of this, we get back to minus 2 is times 1. So this is a valid solution. And similarly for minus the cube root of 2 times e to the 4 pi i over 3. So we're about to substitute these into this expression z minus 2 over z. So just for convenience here, we'll rewrite our 4s as 2s to the power of 2. So what do I mean here? We'll just write z instead of 4 to the power of 1 third, this is going to be 2 to the power of 2 thirds. And we'll do as well with these cube roots of unity. We'll introduce another letter here, so we'll just say that w is going to be e to the 2 pi i over 3, just for convenience. And this is nice because then w squared is equal to e to the 4 pi i over 3, and w cubed is just equal to 1. So this gives us a nice way of expressing all of our potential solutions for z here. 2 to the 2 thirds times w. You've also got 2 to the 2 thirds w squared up here. Then we get minus 2 to the 1 third, where we don't really need the brackets there. And also minus 2 to the third times w. And finally, minus 2 to the third times w squared. Now we can substitute in these z values to find our x values. Let's start off when z is 2 to the 2 thirds. Substituting this into z minus 2 over z tells us that x is going to be 2 to the 2 thirds minus 2 over 2 to the 2 thirds, so minus 2 to the power of 1 third is our first solution for x there. We'll start with the easier one, so we'll go on to z is minus 2 to the third now. What does this tell us about x? Well, x is going to be minus 2 to the third, then we do minus 2 over minus 2 to the third, so we end up with a plus 2 to the 2 thirds. And this is really interesting, because you see this is actually the same solution as we had earlier. 
So even though we've got six potential solutions for Z, we seem to be getting some repeats here, which is nice. So we'll move on now to Z is 2 to the 2 thirds times W. This tells us then that X is going to be 2 to the 2 thirds W. Then we end up with minus 2 to the third over W when we do 2 over 2 to the 2 thirds W. And there's something really nice we can do here, because remember that w is a cube root of unity, so we know that w cubed is equal to 1, and a consequence of this is that 1 over w you can actually write as w squared, and similarly we can show that 1 over w squared is just equal to w. So this gives us a nice way of expressing our final solutions. For x here you get 2 to the 2 thirds w minus 2 to the 1 third times w squared. So this is our next solution for x. We'll move on to 2 to the 2 thirds times w squared. So when z is 2 to the 2 thirds w squared, we see that x is going to be 2 to the 2 thirds w squared. Then we end up with minus 2 to the third over w squared, so minus 2 to the third, but 1 over w squared is just equal to w, so we can just write this with minus 2 to the third times w. Moving on to our remaining ones here, we could actually stop at this point because we found this is a cubic equation and we found three distinct solutions. So we know that a cubic can have at most three solutions, but just for interest we'll have a look at what the remaining solutions are when we plug in these values of z. So z is minus 2 to the third w. This would give us x is equal to minus 2 to the third w and plus 2 to the two thirds times 1 over w, so this turns into a w squared, and you see here that this is actually just a repeat of the previous root that we've had there, so we don't need that one. And similarly when we do z is minus 2 to the third times w squared, we get x is equal to minus 2 to the third w squared, plus we get 2 to the 2 thirds, and the 1 over w squared just turns into a w, so we just have 2 to the 2 thirds times w, we see this is a repeat of our second root that we found there, so we don't need that either. So we've solved the problem now, we can show that x is equal to 2 to the 2 thirds minus 2 to the 1 third, and then it's also equal to 2 to the 2 thirds w minus 2 to the third w squared, and your third solution is 2 to the 2 thirds w squared minus 2 to the third times w. So how did we know that this substitution, this change of variables from x to z, was going to be helpful? And more importantly, can we apply this method more generally? Well, this method is called Vieta's substitution, and this relies on having our cubic in this form, where your coefficient of x cubed is 1, and your coefficient of x squared is 0. Unfortunately, there is a way to take any cubic equation and transform it by changing variables, so similar to how we replaced our x with z's. There's a way of taking any cubic equation and getting it into this form, so I'll include a link on that. So this tells us then that this method can actually be applied to any cubic, perhaps with a little bit of extra work. So then the key idea here is we replace x by z plus k over z, and then this turns things into a degree 6 equation in z. And the idea is to use a clever choice of k, which will turn this into something that's actually a quadratic in, in z cubed, which we can then solve to find z cubed, then we can find z, then we can find x. So let me explain what we mean here. We'll start off just by replacing our x's by z plus k over z, then we'll see what choice of k we need to make. So plus a times z plus k over z plus b, all of this is equal to zero. So then when we expand brackets, z cubed plus 3kz plus 3k squared over z plus k cubed over z cubed plus az plus a k over z plus b, this is equal to zero, so we'll collect our like terms, our different powers of z, so you get z cubed plus now 3k plus a times z, then we'll put the b term here in the middle, then for our 1 over z's we get 3k squared plus a k all over z, and then finally plus our k cubed over z cubed term, so this is equal to zero. And what we'll do at this point, so that we can turn this into a quadratic that we can solve, we want to get rid of this term here, so we're going to choose k equal to minus a over 3, so that this vanishes. And crucially, this is telling us then that our substitution is x is equal to z minus a over 3z. So this is the actual substitution that we need to make here for this cubic equation. 
So this is really nice when k is minus a over 3, this term disappears. What's really important as well is that actually if you substitute in k is minus a over 3 into 3k squared plus a k, this term actually disappears as well, and this is equal to 0, which is really nice because now we just get z cubed plus b plus k cubed over z cubed, this is equal to 0. So now if we multiply by z cubed, we get z to the 6 plus z cubed times b, and we'll replace the k cubed by now minus a cubed over 3 cubed, so 27. All of this is equal to 0. And you can see here that z to the 6, if we write this once again as z cubed squared, we've got a quadratic which we can solve to find z cubed, then we can find z, then we can find x. So the only problem at this point is we're going to get six possible solutions for z, and we can only actually have three possible solutions for x when it's a cubic. So we'll explore this in a bit more detail now. So when we solve to find the values of z cubed, we can get up to two potentially complex solutions for z cubed. Then working like before, we can take cube roots and we'll get a solution z is alpha, but then if this is a valid solution, so will be alpha times w and alpha times w squared as well. If we've got another solution, beta, when we take cube roots, we'll have beta times w and beta times w squared will also be solutions. And it's really worth emphasising at this point that we're not actually going to get six distinct solutions here. There's going to be some repetition, which is really important because otherwise the method doesn't quite seem to work where you need to get at most three solutions for x. So how can we see this? Well, we're going to use Vieta's formula. We've got the six roots z here, and basically we know that the product of the roots is going to be equal to minus a cubed over 27. When we multiply together all of these roots, we'll actually just get alpha cubed times beta cubed, so don't forget that w cubed is equal to 1, so these two lots of w cubed we get just disappear. So alpha cubed beta cubed using Vieta's formula is equal to minus a cubed over 27. And this is useful now because let's just write this as alpha cubed is equal to minus a cubed over 27 beta cubed. Well, we don't know exactly what's going to happen when we take cube roots, but we can say one thing, which is that alpha is going to be one of three following options. So alpha is either going to be minus a over 3 times beta, or where we take the cube root of this minus 1, this is the problem really, you can have minus a w over 3 beta, or you could have minus a w squared over 3 beta. What we'll actually do as well here is we'll take these w's into the denominator. It'll make sense in a moment why we're doing this. But don't forget w is equal to 1 over w squared. So in each of these cases, alpha is equal to minus a over 3b to begin with, or it's equal to minus a over 3 beta times w squared, or it's equal to minus a over 3 times beta times w, because w squared is the same as 1 over w. Okay, so we're going to substitute these in. If you think z is equal to alpha, we'll substitute this in here, alpha minus a over 3 alpha, to find our x solution. So we're actually interested in what is the value of minus a over 3 alpha in each of these cases. So when we take minus a over 3 alpha, when alpha is equal to minus a over 3 beta, we just get beta. And when we take minus a over 3 alpha when alpha is equal to this, all we're going to get in the end is beta times w squared, and for this one it's similar, minus a over 3 alpha is just equal to beta times w. So we don't necessarily know what alpha is equal to, but in each of these cases we know how to express alpha and a corresponding value for minus a over 3 alpha. So if we take alpha minus a over 3 alpha, what do we actually get in each of these cases? You have minus a over 3 beta plus beta, so I'll write this as beta minus a over 3 beta in our first case, and then in the second case we'll have this term plus this term, so we'll write this as beta w squared minus a over 3 beta times w squared. And finally in our third case we'll have this term plus this term, so write this as beta w minus a over 3 beta w. So this is really nice now because you can actually see we don't know which case we're in, but in each of these cases beta minus a over 3 beta, this is actually the x solution you would get if you took z equal to beta here. In this case, beta w squared minus a over 3 beta w squared, this is the x solution you would get 
if you took z equal to beta w squared. And finally, this one, beta w minus a over 3 beta w is the x solution you would get if you took z equal to beta w. So we're always going to get a duplication here. Alpha minus 3 over alpha is actually the same as one of our beta solutions. So we can do something similar with alpha w and alpha w squared. So this explains why we don't actually get six solutions. They're always going to come in pairs.